Hello my friends and welcome to another video. I will make it a quick one because I'm kind of tired from work. Um, so here we go. There's one safety level I actually didn't explain. Uh, there's at least one, there's probably more. And this is the um, the the, the uh, project protection. So let's see what that looks like. I have a project here, I, the reset ap15 underscore one project. You see, I want to open it and I cannot because I need a username and I need a password. If I do not have a username, if I do not have an assigned password, I cannot open this project. I can click cancel, I cannot get in there. Right. And I'm going to explain you very quick how we can do this. Uh, therefore, I have prepared another project here. I will open the other project. And you see this is not password protected at all. So let's go in there. And we see I have a PLC here. And in the PLC, I can right now do everything because there is no protection turned on. Right. I can delete, I can change, I can do stuff. So. On the same level as the PLC, so without even opening the PLC because it belongs to the uh, project settings, we have the security settings. If I open the security settings, I can just open the settings. Right for now. Later on, we will have more options. So in the settings, I have project protection and I have password policies. You see, password policies. There's nothing. It's a blank page. I love it. Um, we have to protect our project first, which is deactivated from the beginning on. Here we can just click one button, protect this project. Careful, this cannot be undone. If you turn on passwords for this project, you will always have to um, log in when using this project, which makes sense. But a warning here, you will always have to do it. So I will protect this project. And of course, I will need to put in a username um, and a password. So let's do it. That's me. And of course, I am using some type of password. Got the password. And I can, of course, as with every password, I can uh, make a comment. Uh, hey, hey, in case I forget it, a hint, like with Windows and many other tools nowadays. So this password is restricted. I think eight symbols, so at least eight symbols long with one special character. Right. That's the standard. That's for the administrator. For the others, we have the password policies. I hit OK. Right. And now the password is being protected, which takes a second or two. And now the project is actually protected. Right. So you can see we have now password policies. And on the left side here, we now have users and roles and security features. Pretty cool. So if I save my project now, if I close it and let's reopen it, what can we see? Tia Portal asks me for the permission for this project, which of course I have, because of course I am uh, the administrator. I just typed it in, right? You go. Got the password in. I am in the project. If I do not have a login, I can't get in, as I showed a minute ago. Um, now, of course, we do not. Uh, just have an administrator we have other users that want to log in we have programmers right we have people that just do some um, troubleshooting some diagnostics stuff like this therefore everyone else that we want in the project can also get a password right and those passwords are restricted by our password policies so i can say here minimum length eight is the least you can't go less i can do more right uh Number of numeric characters, I don't want this, I don't need this, it's safe enough. Number of special characters, I don't need it. Uh, at least one uppercase, one lower lowercase, case, I don't care, can turn it all off. So for your project, you can, of course, for your engineers, for your programmers, you can choose the password policies. Um, and also down here, we can uh, choose the password for the project user, some settings there. Uh, how many times are they allowed to type in the wrong password? Five times, that's a standard setting, makes sense. Um, and enable password aging. If you have password aging enabled, then a user has to refresh their password, in this case, every 60 days. We can also put it less or more. So you have to refresh the password, some just safety regulations, and we can put a warning seven days before they have to refresh. Hey, you have to refresh it. We all know it nowadays from the internet, from everything. We know those password routines, quite annoying, but that's how it is. I don't like password aging. <clears throat> yeah, let's save. 
and let's create some users, right? We have, of course, our administrator here, um, and that administrator is me. I just created it. That's the user I created when turning on password protection. And on top, we can see the current status has not been checked with UMC. You can check status or synchronize. This UMC, I won't use right now. This is the not just with this one project, but with all projects together on your network, on this PC. Um, you have this administration. There's some administration going on that you could turn on, which is not focus of this video. So we won't get into the UMC. It's a nice thing for a company where you are working with many people together on the same projects. But right now we just have this here on one PC. <clears throat> so on this one PC, you can see my user Hegamol is uh, engineering administrator, which gives him assigned rights, which, which gives him or me the rights to open the project with read rights, open it with read and write rights, manage users and roles, security, full stuff. So that's basically all the rights. The administrator can do everything. Right. Then we have, let's say, the next one here, um, a new project user, or you just type in, in the name, but um, here we go, new user, that's my name. For everyone that's been asking, that's my first name. Um, here we go. Uh, I have to type in a password with the conditions that we met earlier, with those conditions. Um, and I'll choose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did not type in there. I need to click here, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that a, that's not a legit password. Why not? The password must contain and the password longer does not exceed. What? Should be correct. Oh. Okay, something with my restrictions is not right, so I'll choose a different one. That definitely meets the. Here we go. Got it. <laughs> I left one checkbox or so un un unchecked there. What? What was it? Oh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are just seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, that's eight. Strange, but that's how it is. <clears throat> yeah, should work. Um, so now I have a user, and this user, right, has a password. And um, let's try to open the project with this user and see what happens. Uh, opening the project with the project user. The other one, the global user, this is this UMC. This is with the administration uh, tool. Won't look into this right now. So we have a user, that's me. The user has, of course, a password. Let's log in. An error occurred while opening the project. This user does not have any rights. It does not have authorization, right? Of course not. We did not give him any. So the administrator, before we do it, we, before we can log in as a different user, the administrator has to actually give this user the rights to do something. Here in user roles, you see in the lower part, in this lower part, the rights are not activated for this user. You see, he can't do anything. If I take, for example, engineering standard, engineering standard can open the project with read rights and open the project with read and write rights so they can actually program, right? The administrator here can do more. So let's see. Let's log out and let's log in as Philip now. <coughs> so uh, that's da -da -da, that's me and that's a password that I just made up. Here we go. I can log in. You can see. I can go in here. I can look at my program. I cannot. Here's the things that I cannot do, for example. Go to my security settings. This is not allowed for this user. So every user can have different rights. And you see how many different, let me get back there for a second. You can see how many different protection levels there are, or well, not global user. You can see how many, I should have chosen a different password. Um, how many different possibilities of combining those rights have. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pre-installed um, different user groups. You can make more, you can change those groups with the um, uh, with this UMC, with the external tool, with TI administrator and stuff. We won't do that right now because it's usually not needed. Um, let's say we have someone that's just there for, let's say, diag diagnostics. 
right? This guy is called Diagnostics. Whoops, <laughs> I just deleted him. Uh, project user, and this user is for Diagnostics. He has, of course, a password that is exactly the same password as for the other two. Exactly the same password, and he is only for Diagnostics. Let's save, let's go back and close the project. Let's log in as this Diagnostics guy, whoever that might be. Whoops. <laughs> uh, which is the current project, this one? Project project. So, um, diagnostics, maybe I typed it in wrong and I can't remember the name. Yeah, <laughs> I totally forgot the, the name of, of that guy, so that's okay. Of course you need to remember your passwords and everything. What was it? Did I type in anything wrong? Just give me a second, I am sorry. Uh, diagnostics, oh, uppercase, I wanted to... Lowercase, of course, diagnostics, and he has this password. And just give me five more seconds to log in as diagnostics. And with this password, here you go, logged in as him. And you can already see those are grayed out, so he can't see those. Let's go in here, the PLC, everything is grayed out, which is, which means it's read only. Right? This guy, he can only read, for example, in the project, but he can't change anything. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. That was already way too long. So that's the basics of protecting your project against entry from the outside, which I like a lot, actually, but I rarely use because I'm mostly working on my own. Uh, but it's very, very handy if you have to protect your knowledge, if you have to protect your programming. Um, yeah. If this is any helpful, leave a like. Do not forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos every Tuesday and Thursday. I'll try to pump them out every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, I hope that I can keep it up at this rate because I have so much other work to do. But uh, thank you for your support and I will see you the next time around. Bye-bye. Um,